Hi everyone. I hope that uh, you're doing as well as can you can be uh, on this Tuesday afternoon. It's a beautiful day after all the rain that we've got uh, the last couple of days. Uh, but it is a beautiful day out here today. And I hope that you're doing well. You know, I know that there's a good possibility that um, some of you may be experiencing a little bit of depression. Uh, with everything that's going on, with some of the things that we're having to deal with, and um, you know, how can we as Christians um, deal with uh, depression? And does God's Word um, have anything to say about depression? Well, I believe there's a lot of things that we can we can learn from God's Word about depression. And uh, so th this, this afternoon, I want us to study Lessons with My Bible in Helping Me Deal with Depression. A good text to use or to read at this time would be Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25, where Solomon records these words for us. Notice what he says. Anxiety in the heart of a good man causes depression. Notice that. Worry. Certain cares that is in the heart of you and I cause depression. You know, when we think about the things that we worry about, uh, basically, why worry about things that we have no, no control over? But yet we do have, have problems with, uh, with releasing those type of controls. Uh, sometimes it's hard. You know, I, I love my mother very much, and most of you know that, that I have I've told you in Bible class uh, lessons and such that one of the problems that my mother had, had in her life was that she really had a bad case of depression. Um, she allowed worry uh, just to overtake her and, and overtake her life at times. And there were times that... I would talk to her, my, my siblings would talk to her and try to get her to uh, see that you know there was nothing to be depressed about. Uh, it, we just could not, somehow we just couldn't get that it, get her to understand uh, that really if we think about it, God is in control of everything and trying to get her to understand that. But she had a problem with depression. What are some of the things that people become depressed about. Finances is one. You know, and I know that there are some folks that uh, have been furloughed from their job because of the pandemic that's going on. Uh, there's a nurse that was taking care of me at my doctor's office uh, with the high blood pressure that I'm dealing with. Uh, I called yesterday to give her the readings of my blood pressure and I was told that she was furloughed. Well, you know, I'm sure that this is probably causing her a little bit of concern and anxiety, maybe even worry, and maybe even becoming depressed over it. I'm sure that some of our uh, workers at our, at our hospitals in town are being furloughed because the hospitals are not doing the sort of things that they they were doing at one time. You know, as I was looking at the idea or studying the background of depression, I found out that de depression can be inherited. It's it's a gene, a genetic thing that can go from uh, generation to generation, and it may be that my mother inherited this. Uh, this gene that caused her to be depressed. But life events can cause depression. Loneliness can cause depression. Illness can cause depression. You know, there are many life events that can cause any one of us to be depressed. But now the next logical question that we should ask is how does the Bible help us in overcoming depression? Or does the Bible say anything about depression? You know, that's something that you and I as Christians really need to, to, to deal with when we, or, or to ask whenever we're dealing with certain emotions. Does God's Word have anything to say about it? 
If we, if we really believe the Bible, then we need to believe that there are things in the Bible that will help us overcoming uh, depression and, and such things as this. Now, going back to Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25 where Solomon writes that anxiety in the heart makes man uh, in the heart of man makes depression or causes depression Solomon finishes this thought by saying but a good word makes it glad a good word makes what glad a good word makes the heart glad so what is the good word well the good word is the word of God so for you and I as Christians, we may have issues uh, and anxiety, things that we're worried over, and it may cause depression, but the thing that can get us out of that depression is the good word of, the, of, of God. The King James Version uses the word heaviness for the word anxiety. And, you know, that's a, that's a good word to use because depression is a heaviness of the mind, of the heart, of the soul. Uh, anxiety in the Hebrew word refers to having apprehension uh, because of upcoming trouble. You know, that, that's what happens. We get depressed because of something that is we think is going to happen. And many times it does not happen. So worry sets in. Anxiety sets in. Depression sets in for something that may not ever happen. But here we are in, in this pandemic. We're dealing with some things that is happening. And so it may be that uh, we are dealing with depression, and some of us may be. Uh, other places in Scripture, it deals with uh, anxiety over running out of food, anxiety for, uh, that is caused by God's judgment. Now we, we see that with the children of Israel when God has said, I'm going to punish you because of what you have done. And, and so they have a little bit of anxiety in their heart because they know of the con uh, God is going to punish them for the consequences or having the consequences of their actions. You know, sometimes that worry and depression can set in because of bad news that we receive. So we can see that anxiety and depression or the heaviness of heart or whatever you want to, to call it is something that we all face. In Nehemiah chapter 2 I believe it is, uh, Nehemiah is, is the cupbearer for the king. It's in there, Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2. We Nehemiah gets some, some bad wor uh, news and it we are told that it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20, uh, 20th year of, king, of the king that Nehemiah was serving, when Nehemiah set wine before the king, that he took the wine and gave it to the king. And, and he says here in, in verse 1, he's never been sad in the presence before. It was a dangerous thing to come before the king with an attitude of sadness or uh, something along this line. But the king said, looked at Nehemiah, the king saw that Nehemiah had something on his heart, and he said, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid. He was, he was afraid, uh, was fearful that the king was going to punish him or put him to death because he came before the king, serving the king with a, with a heart that was upset. Nehemiah was depressed because of the condition of the walls around Jerusalem. He was, con he was sad about the condition of the city. How it had been... Uh, the temple, how everything was, had gone, uh, had been destroyed or, or uh, it was in ruins, in other words. So, Nehemiah was a little upset and depressed about it. You know, Jesus, I believe at some time, faced a little bit of depression. In Mark chapter 14, beginning in verse 32, when Jesus was going into... Uh, the garden to pray he said to, he came to a place named Gethsemane and he said to his disciple sit here while I pray and he took Peter and James and John with him and he be, he began to be troubled we're told and deeply distressed 
Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Then he went a little bit further and prayed. And this is before Jesus was arrested. So was Jesus depressed? Um, maybe. It's hard to say that Jesus was depressed, but I think we can say with, with full assurance that Jesus was experiencing the feeling of heaviness and some anxiety. And it, it, it's not sinful to have that type of attitude unless we allow that attitude, that depression, that anxiety or to take us away from God. So, how is it that you and I can conquer depression? Let's consider what the Bible says. Just a few verses about this subject and then hopefully that will help each one of us deal with what people call depression. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Peter says, Cast your care to God. And in that text it says, Because He cares for you. So first, when we are experiencing depression or anxiety, turn to God. And then Peter said, Literally throw that fear, that care, whatever it is that is that, that uh, we are dealing with, Give it to God. You know, it's really interesting that Peter uses a word here, the word cast, that is a fisher, uh, a fisherman's term. Was not Peter a fisherman? Now he is a fisher of men. And he's saying, throw. As a fisherman would cast his net out to the water, throw whatever is bothering you to the Lord. In Matthew chapter 11, in verses 28 through 30, Jesus said, Come unto me, uh, all you who are heavy and need rest, are uh, heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Throw it to God. Give it to God. And then and again in verse 25 of Proverbs 12, Look to the word of God to make your heart happy. A good word makes the heart glad. But number two, the verse I want to look at is Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 about depression. The king told Nehemiah to go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions of, to those who, uh, for whom ha uh, nothing is prepared. For this day is the holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow, for joy of the Lord is your strength. Actually, that's Nehemiah talking to the people. Now, what did he say? He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. When we're facing depression, think about who we are. Think about what we are. Nehemiah was, a, was the cupbearer for the king, and Nehemiah had left the king. The king gave him permission to leave and, and to go and do what he needed to do. And, 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 and so when he gets there with the people, he says, you know what? Our strength is is with God and our joy is in the Lord. We don't need to be depressed about this. Let's get to work. You know, the word joy indicates that that, that is where God is. Or oh, where God is, there is joy. That's the idea behind this Hebrew word. Where, where, joy, uh, where God is, there's where we can find true happiness. You want to be happy again? You want, don't want to face depression? Find God. Put God in your life. So, it could be fitting to say that if we want joy instead of depression, I need to be with God. I need to be with the Lord. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, said he had a thorn in the flesh or a thorn in his life. And what it is, we don't know. Um, we, we don't know what it was, but it could be that when we look at verse 8, it could have been this, this thorn was causing Paul a little bit of depression in his life. Because Paul writes these words, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that, he might, uh, that it might depart me. And then God says to, uh, to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul writes, Most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm going to glory in whatever I'm having to deal with because of who I am and what I am. 
Number three, the number third verse upon depression is found in Hosea chapter 6 in verse 1 where Hosea writes, Come and let us return to the Lord. He will heal us. He will bind us up. So when we're feeling depressed and dealing with depression, return to God. That's number one. Because He will heal you. He will bind up. You. He will help you. That's why Hosea, uh, Hosea lets us know. In other words, turn to God for the help and comfort. God is the great healer. I, I don't know about you, but I've been praying an awful lot for our country and for our leaders that are that are leading us through this this pandemic that we are are experiencing. And. You know, sometimes I just need to realize instead of watching the news, I need to turn the news off and just talk to God. Because when you talk, when you watch the news, sometimes it can be just downright depressing, can it? So, sometimes the best thing for us to do is to turn the news off and, and turn to God. You know, the, the term bind us up is a verb meaning to wrap or to bind another object. Now, how does God bind us? Well, figuratively, God binds us up in love. He wraps His arms around us. He comforts us. And that has happened through the Word. And God will wrap His loving arms around us when we turn to Him because of our depression. Number three verse that I want to look at in, in depression is found in, uh, in Psalm chapter 5 in verse 11. Psalm 5 in verse 11. Where we're where the psalmist writes, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Rejoice. Be. So, so the psalmist says, if you want to be happy, put your trust in God. And then he goes on and says, let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. In other words, God will help them. Whatever we're facing, whatever emotion that we're dealing with, whatever pandemic comes upon us, it's not a bad thing for the Christian because we have the Lord on our side. Depression may attack us, dear friends. It may attack you. You may be dealing with it. And it may be because of this pandemic. But I want you to think about something. Yesterday, as I put out the call multiple, multiple uh, the call multiplier, uh, report about some of our members. There are some of our spiritual family that are, are in worse shape than you and I are. They, they, they have sickness upon them. We have, we have some individuals that are in the hospital and their family cannot come in and see them because the hospitals are locked down. You know, that can, definitely has to weigh heavy on, on a person. We've got individuals that are sick. I personally have a family member that is locked down in, in a nursing home but, and unable to get out. And, and so no doubt that they may feel a little rough, but, you know, at least I can get out of my house. I can walk out. I can get fresh air. So when I feel depressed, I, want, I need to concentrate on those individuals that are a, a little bit worse off than I am. And if we look around, we can always find someone that's worse off than we are. So even though depression may attack us, we can, and notice that, we can overcome it because God loves us and He cares for us. But more than that, He's given us a way to, to overcome it. And that's in this book right here. Just open it up. Read it. Study it. Live it. Believe it. Have a great day. Don't let depression or any other emotion that, that you may be experiencing overwhelm you to the point that, that it pulls you away from God.